Hey everybody, Andrew here. Got a really nice one in the post yesterday. Uh, this came from Greece, from Athens, from Atmamahani, I think that's how you say it, uh, from Katerina and Michalis. Now they are the two people behind Atmamahani and they produce already some really well known, very, very high quality stuff such as the 69 mod, uh, the Nemesis, the steam machine, the Loki tank, you know, a number of different things. And what they've come up with this time is an automatic dripper. And it's called the 3D. And this is it. Now this is sitting on my Nemesis and this is a brushed version. It comes in two different versions. Uh, a polished version and a brushed version. So this is my one here. And as you'll see from this, and I'll go through it in detail later on, when you do that, basically what it does is it delivers liquid to the uh, coil that you have inside because there's a little tank within this. So essentially what it is, it's an automatic dripper which has an amount of liquid, about one and a half mils, within a little tank inside this. And every time your coil starts to get a bit dry, you need a bit more liquid on it or whatever, you literally just pump the top like that. And it delivers liquid up to the coil to keep it nice and saturated. So a very, very innovative thing. Now this is called a 3D after Dimmy's Dream Dripper. And Dimmy is uh, Dimitri, otherwise known as a vape in Greek, uh, from over in the US. And he had had an idea because he had been a big fan of dripping and he was using the um, Inican Yukan. And the Inican Yukan is essentially, it's, a, it's like a little bottle with a little sort of a pump action thing on it where you can basically drip into a dripper. You can put the liquid into it. So it means that you can carry it around with you, which is a great thing in itself. But what he thought was, if you could actually have a dripper that has got that ability built into it, then you'd have something that's a bit special. So he, I think he approached um, a couple of people, but in particular he ended up, the person who really took this on board was uh, Michalis in at Mamahani. And so what he did was he came up with this particular design for the 3D, and that's why it's called that after uh, Dimitri. And it works an absolute treat, I have to say. It's very, very easy to set up. Um, it vapes like a dream. The flavour is fantastic off it. Um, it just works and it works really, really well. And what's more, it looks absolutely fantastic on a Nemesis because it, because essentially what it does is it actually screws straight into the tube. Uh, so if I take this off here, you will see that it hasn't got a 510 connection at the bottom. It's got a connection in my case for uh, the Nemesis, but there's another version you can get where it's got the correct threading and it's set up basically for the 69 mod. So that's it, that's what it looks like. So the best thing is, is uh, for me to go down close on it and uh, show you the insides of it, take it all apart and then um, build a coil and we'll put a coil into it and uh, we'll take it from there. Right, let's uh, go down close and uh, have a look at this. So here it is in detail. Um, made up of a number of pieces. I'll take it apart now so you can see it. As I said earlier on, the big thing on this is the fact that you can basically, the top pushes down into the bottom and what that does is that squirts liquid up onto, uh, to, to, to get your um, wicks wet. So that each time it starts to dry out a little bit, <clears throat> you can essentially just uh, load it back up again by pushing the top down. Uh, and that's the automatic aspect of it and that's fantastic. So just looking at it closely there, 3D on one side, on the reverse side then the serial number but also the Atma Mahani uh, train which is ever present on what the stuff that they do. It's really quite deep engraving on, on this one, uh, deeper than on some of the other things that I've actually seen. Um, again looking at it closely you'll see that there's a number of holes here 
at the side. Um, all to do with air. And then you've also got this. You see this turns around here. This controls your air. And that's basically it. At the bottom here the connector in this particular case is for a Nemesis. So it basically screws directly into a Nemesis like that. So it's not going to fit on anything other than a Nemesis in this case. But as I said there's also a version for the 69 mod. Uh, which is another mod that uh, at Mama Honey make. So that's it. So um, I'm going to take it apart uh, and then show you how to put it back together again. Just before I take it apart I uh, will just do a couple of measurements on it. Uh, height wise as it stands at the moment if we go from if you like just above the, the tread here so in other words this is the bit that's going to be sticking out of the top of your nemesis it is, let me just see there, it is 35 millimeters. And then width wise, well, it's the same width as a Nemesis, which is 22. So there are the sizes on it. Okay, so breaking it apart is very, very simple. First of all, you can pull out this top part here. This leaves this here. This top part goes into two pieces. So you have a sleeve, which is your air control, which we can pull off here. Now, I haven't uh, put any liquid on these, but you know when there's some liquid on them, it, you know it obviously uh, comes off a lot easier. These O-rings here are very tightly fitting, um, but you know all you need is just a tiny bit of lubrication on them, and they work perfectly. So there's our top. At the top there, this will take any 510. Um, drip tip in on in it. Um, looking inside there, we can see the air holes. You can see them there. Different sizes, different positions, and we'll go through those shortly, so you can see how that works. This is the sleeve that I just took off, and again, you can see air holes on those. The air holes that they have basically is 1.2, 1 1.5, 1 and 1.8. So there's our 1.2, sorry, there's our 1.2, there's in the middle is a 1.8, and there is a 1.5 there. And this essentially slips on to this. And then it's the combination of these holes with these holes here that allow you to actually uh, control your airflow. And again, I'll go through it, but um, what you'll see is that you can actually set it up for dual coil or for single coil. coil. So for a dual coil you obviously need two air holes uh, and that's perfectly possible. The other thing is you'll see just here there's indicators just above here. You see these little pips? They are there to show that when this is covered over that's where the air holes are underneath it. So that gives you a guide so that when that's covering it you can actually see where the air holes are underneath it which is handy as well. So we'll take that apart, put them down. Now the gubbins, the inside of it. As you can see inside here, and I'll take this apart now in a second, you've got um, two negative posts and one positive post in the middle there. Uh, so that means that you can set it up for a single coil or for dual coil. At the bottom there, you see in the well, you can see that little hole. That's the hole that the liquid comes up through when you're actually uh, when you when you depress the top. It will squirt liquid up through that onto your wick to make sure that it stays uh, nice and moist. Okay, so to take this part apart, essentially what we do is we screw the negative posts off. And if we have a look at this, you can see it's threaded in the center, and then you've got your two negative posts, but with these posts here, I don't know whether you can see it, it's actually made up of a couple of pieces. So you have a sort of flange part at the bottom, then you have a washer, and then you have the screw at the top. Where you want to basically get your wire in is, let's see if I've got a little screwdriver here, when you're putting your wire in you want to get it in there. 
so between the washer and the flange piece underneath okay but very simple very straightforward on the center here we have this well this cup which can be pulled out and we'll look at that first with this particular cup here you can see that it's got an o-ring on now this is a silicon o-ring as far as I know uh, quite often what happens with uh, normal o-rings is that after a while they sort of they get stuck they, they, they sort of seal in uh, and get stuck to whatever it is that they're pushing against whereas with a silicon one uh, they don't so it means that even if they're, it's sitting somewhere for a while and sitting against something for a while it won't stick so it'll always be able to move up and down so that is why I would imagine that they've got that particular type of o-ring there because elsewhere you can see they're using black o-rings on the inside here we've got a little screw now this screw can come out I'm sure I might as well take it out while I'm, while I'm at it and show you what this screw is all about and when you look at this screw you can see that it's hollow and essentially this is the screw up through which the liquid is going to come when you depress the top of it so we can uh, uh, it's one of those things should I have taken it out or should I not I know it'll go back in it's just going to be a little bit fiddly to get it back in let's see I'll try it one more time here if not I'll uh, do it off camera yeah I'm okay I've got it so that just basically screws back into there screw that down to the bottom and there it is back in place and you can see it then from the reverse side okay on the base we have a spring and this is the spring that is basically going to push this piece back up when you depress it and then on the middle part here we have our centre post and this centre post obviously goes right the way down through to the bottom here and this is silver plated uh, if I take this part off let's just unscrew the centre part the centre uh, screw here we have this little nut which attaches onto the post at the top there and around the post you'll see that there's an insulator so that's it that's it. that's all of the various different pieces now I could pull the center post out here uh, but it, but there's there's little point in doing so there'd be no need no need for you to ever do that really so the bottom of this here, this is where the liquid that you put in, it's about a one and a half mils, um, millimeter, mill, milliliters actually sits into the bottom of this. Okay. So if I just put this back together piece by piece, essentially this part can go on at the beginning or afterwards. It's, it's whatever is easier uh, for you. Uh, for me, it's fine to actually go on at the beginning. So we have that nice and tightly in place then the next thing is the spring which just goes in simply like that and you need to make sure that it's it's nice and centered the next thing to go on is the base the bit that goes underneath the coil that literally just pushes on over the top like that and then what we need to do is put the negative posts on and to do that you just slide that over the top and then you need to hold the side down here because remember the spring is trying to push this well up so what we need to do is hold the spring down so hold the uh, the side down against the spring and screw this part in until it is firm now you will hear it clicking off the top of the uh, the little uh, valve down below so that is in nice and tight now now as it stands at the moment you can see that that little the little valve is you know, just slightly off center now it's entirely up to you where you want to actually put this um, you know I've 
basically been putting it just to the side here. But it's really, however you're setting this up, um, you know, you can place it where you want. Uh, it's, it's not that critical where it goes. Obviously, you don't want it to be going underneath here. You want it to be out in the open somewhere. But what this is going to do is liquid's going to come up through this and it's going to seep into the bottom of this well. And then obviously, you're going to have your wicks in the bottom of the well. So um, it will then sort of seep into your wicks. So that's that's basically how it works. Okay, now if you want to change the position of that, the easiest way to do so is to do it with the top. So if I put that down for a sec, I put this back on again, and we'll go back to the air holes in a second. But I'll basically put this back on here like that. That when I then place this in, what I can do is turn the top and it will change the position of the valve. So if I put that in there now, and if I push it down and turn it, remember where it was? Now it's moved it over to the side there. And if I want to move that back into the center, just push it down, give it a sort of a half turn, pull it out, I didn't do it properly there, push it down, give it a bit of a half turn, and there we are, it's moved it more into the center. So basically by doing that, you can change the position of it to wherever you want it to go. Now to the air holes. As I mentioned earlier on, um, there's a number of different configurations here. You've got three different sizes that you can use for a single uh, coil setup and then essentially one size that you can use for a dual coil. So of the holes that are here, and again each one corresponds with a little dimple or an indentation up at the side here, so that when it's covered by this piece here, you know where the holes actually sit. So this is a 1.8, this is a 1.5, and this here is a 1.2. On the other side, there's one hole here which I think is a 1.8. Okay, now, if you're doing a single setup, what you need to be doing is concentrating on this particular hole here, which is the biggest of the holes on the sleeve. There are three holes on the sleeve. There's the big one in the middle, which is 1.8, and then there are two smaller ones, which are, in each case, 1.2. And they're the ones that you'd be using for a dual coil setup. So if I just twist that there, so I've got the 1.8 here and the 1.8 here, that means that then when I push that on, what I have there is a 1.8 hole. If I then turn this the other direction there, I've now got a 1.5. And if I turn it again, I've now got a 1.2. So that's basically how that works. If I, however, use the smaller hole on this part here, and I turn it around to the 1.2 Two position. Let me just get this right. 1.2, which is there. You will see that on the other corresponding side, we have a 1.2 as well. So there's a hole here, and there's a hole here, and that is basically for a dual coil setup. You can see it there. You've got the holes on both sides. So that's basically how that works, and it gives you quite a bit of a configuration, you know, uh, flexibility, if you like. Um, I did hear, I think uh, Dimitri was saying that they may be doing a version with an even bigger hull, a California version, I think they were calling it. Uh, but whether or not that's, uh, when that's going to happen, if it happens, I've no idea. So, the final thing to actually put it together is... And if I set this with my big hole here to the first one, so now I've got a 1.8. Let me just check that I'm right. Sorry, I haven't. Sorry, there's the big one there. Set that, I've got a 1.8. Then essentially that will go over where I have the coil set, which is going to be on one or other of these. And you essentially push it down and that's it. It's all set and ready to go. Right, I'm going to put on two coils onto this. Uh, one here 
and one here. And what I'm going to use is an M3 screw because I find this easiest way to make, um, well, as been pointed out before, they're, they're, they're not micro coils, but they're macro coils. Either way, they're small little tight coils. So what I'll do is, um, I'll just show you how I do one of them and then I'll, I'll cut away and, uh, and build the other one and then we can sort of fit them on. So I'm gonna use 0.28 um, Canthal A and I'm going to do, I'm gonna do nine wraps um, of each. Sorry, nine wraps for each one. And we'll see what that brings us. That'll bring us in under one ohm. Uh, quite how much, I'm not sure, but uh, we'll give it a go and we'll see. So as ever, with the M3 screw, um, what we need to do is start it. Don't start it right at the top because you're gonna have to screw the whole thing right the way off. Uh, so start it down towards the bottom somewhere. You're always going to lose the first turn on it because it's going to be messy. But after that, what you need to do is try and get them in the grooves uh, so that you end up with a nice, tight, neat coil. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, I didn't have enough wire there, so I'm gonna go back the other way, nine, so that should give me my nine. And that's what it looks like there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go and make another one of those and, uh, and then we'll uh, fit them in and see how it goes. Okay, so I have uh, my two coils made. As I said, 0.28 wrapped around an M3 coil, an M3 screw rather. So what I need to do is put the first one in place. Now, as I also mentioned earlier on, what we need to do is try and tuck this in between the washer there and the flange underneath. So that's the intention. And if anything, that's the trickiest part, trying to get that right. So what I'll do is I'll just, um, Place this in, leave it on the screw, because it's always much easier to do it that way. And then just get this underneath the washer. And see if we can position this correctly. Now, excuse me if I go off camera here, but this is, uh, the light isn't the best in here. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to unscrew this just a little bit more to give me a little bit more leeway, a little bit more room. And there, we're in position now. So I pull that through and just tucked it back. And then with our other one, which is on the post in the middle, what we need to do is just hold that in position and tuck that one back there as well, just to hold it. Now the handy thing with any of the sort of heavier gauges is that when you actually pull them into position, they tend to stay in shape. So that's essentially what we want. Now what I'll do is at this stage, I'm gonna screw down this one here, just to hold the wire while I'm doing so. And that should be just about right there. Now, what I need, because I've only got one of these screws, is I need to take this off now. So unscrew it here like this. And then load up my other one, which I have here. And again, because it's nice and uh, firm, this canthal, means you can just screw it back on again, ready to position it. So that should be okay for us there. So now what I want to do is just do exactly the same thing, but on the, get back into the camera, on the other side. So again, I'm just going to unscrew this just a wee bit. Put our two legs through here. Make sure our bottom one comes up and around like that. And our top one 
bends around like that. So we end up with, I don't know whether you can see what's going on there, but we end up with something like that there. So again, what I'll do now is I'll just tighten this one up here so that we're nicely in position. And then what I can do is I can tighten up the center one here, which is obviously holding both in here. Something like that should be okay there. Okay, so there we have our two coils in place. Now what we need to do is snip off the excess wires that we have. So that's just... A lot of people they just wiggle them off um, but for me I always just seem to completely destroy everything when I try to wiggle them off so I, I tend to cut them off. Let's just tighten up all the screws here properly. So we can cut off this one here now. Get rid of that. Get rid of this one here. And then finally, just get rid of that one there. So that's how we're looking at the moment. Um, but we could certainly be a little bit uh, cleaner than that. So. Next thing to do is basically heat them up and then compress them with a little pliers. We can do that one after the other. Now a little tip for when you're doing this, I mean it's dead easy just to push down on the thing like that and you'll get them glowing. When you go to compress them, lift it up because the last thing you want to do is put the power on while you're actually compressing them. What I do now is just tighten that one up there as well. Okay, so here we have the two coils. Now one of them you can see I just sort of uh, screwed up a little bit. Uh, basically what I did was I just um, squeezed it too hard, but uh, rather than going through the whole process again, I think we're probably okay with that. So that's what it's looking like with the two coils when they actually fire. But the one that's uh, towards the bottom of the screen there is just a bit scruffy looking, but it seems to be working okay. Right, so I've taken uh, this back off the, uh, the power, off the Nemesis. Um, because the last thing I want to do is start firing it off while I'm trying to thread the cotton through. Um, cotton wise, I'm just using hospital cotton. I don't know whether you can see here. Let's go back out a little bit. Um, I'm just using hospital cotton here. Um, obviously what you want to do is try and get hold of non-bleached cotton and make it as, you know, it, have it as natural as you can possibly get it. A lot of people boil cotton to be doubly sure and uh, you know it's certainly no harm doing that and probably probably a good thing. Now the one thing you need to remember with um, cotton is you don't need very much of it uh, and it doesn't have to be tight in the coil because it's going to expand while it's in the coil anyway once it starts to get a bit wet. So I'm just going to go for a relatively just tease that out a little bit there in the middle. I'm going to go for this and see with the first one, see how I do. Now the easiest thing always is to get a nice bit of a tail on the end. And then we'll thread it through and see how our first one goes. And our first one goes absolutely fine. So that's number one done. Number two, it's just, it should be okay there, just thread it through.
pull it through there like that. And that's our second one done. So we've got our two little lots of cotton in there. Now, as I said, we don't need too much going on in there. So I'm just going to get rid of some of the tail ends here. Just chop that off, chop that off. A bit at the end, any of the scruffy bits. So we end up with something like that. Now, the next part here really is up to yourself as to how you want to actually, uh, you know, put everything in position. Usually, the best thing to do is to wet the cotton first because it just makes it much more easier to sort of control where you're actually putting it. It also means that it tends to stick in the place where you actually lay it down. So what I'll do is I'll just wet this, get this a, just a little bit easier to manage. And after that we can start uh, deciding where we want it to go. So on the side that doesn't have the intake, the little valve, what we want to do is with this is we just want to basically push it down underneath because remember when the valve actually works what's going to happen is that you're going to get the liquid coming up onto the deck so what you need to do is make sure that your cotton is sitting down on the bottom of the deck so that it can actually absorb it okay so again on the opposing side here we want to turn this around and basically just shove that in underneath like that. And again you want to sort of make sure that the little hole at the bottom isn't covered over because you know it needs to allow be allowed to actually let the liquid up. So that's what I'm going for there, like that. Um, some people might find it better to have more cotton in than that. Um, for me, from what I've done so far, that just seems to work about right for me. Okay, just put a little bit more on and then just fire it up, just make sure it's uh, doing what it's meant to do. In fact, what I might do is just push this coil down ever so slightly as well, there like that. Okay, let's put the power on. See what's happening. Yeah, and it seems to be doing what it's meant to do, which is good. This I I'm not quite sure what um, this is going to be. It's probably maybe about a point seven or something like that. I would have thought. So the next thing for us to do is to actually uh, fill it up. So let me get a syringe. Now, I'm going to fill this. Uh, basically I have uh, I've just put about one mil of liquid into a syringe here and that can then go into the little fill hole and this syringe has got a really really tiny needle on it so it means it takes forever to actually get the liquid out of it So there's about a mil in there at the moment. Okay, let's put the top back on this. Now, what I want for this is, because it's dual coil, I want two holes. So what I'll do is I have a hole there, and then I don't have another hole there. So let's get this right. Got a hole here, and then I've got another hole here. So I've got the two holes open that I need both at 1.2. Now for that I need to make sure that those holes are sitting in front of the coils. So in this case that's going to be just about there and then obviously it'll be correct for the other side as well. So then I just basically push that down. 
So that's it ready to go. All I need is a drip tip to go on that. So let's put the drip tip on. So there we are, all back together again. And uh, let's see what it vapes like. It vapes beautifully. Now, I've said already that I've done a couple of builds on this, a couple of, uh, you know, silica builds and then a single micro coil or macro coil, M3 coil, uh, and this is a dual one. Um, of all of them, probably this one or the uh, single uh, M3 cotton coil would be my favourite. Uh, the silicon, silica one works really well as well, but um, for me, I just think that this uh, works really, really well. Great flavour off it. Great taste off it. For me on a dual coil, using these two 1.2 holes works absolutely fine. For some people, they, they, they may prefer them to be bigger than that, and I suppose you know, if you really wanted to, you could bore them out. Um, but for me, there's no reason to do that whatsoever. Um, another interesting thing about how this works, obviously when you push it down, you get liquid coming up into it. Equally as well though, you can also fill it, although, you know, you're better off probably doing it the syringe way. If you were to hold this down, pour liquid into it, and then let it go, because what will then happen is there'll be suction from underneath and the liquid that is in the bottom, in the bottom of just underneath the coils, is then going to get sucked down into the chamber. Okay. Because of that sucking, the pushing and the sucking, it also means that you've never got too much liquid in this. It's never going to flood um, because it will always suck liquid back down. Anything that's going above that little nut, above the, above the little valve, um, is actually going to end up getting sucked back down into it. I think that's really, really clever. What else to say about it? Um, as Dimitri pointed out, you know, because of the threads on these uh, and the fact that, you know, you're putting it on a mod which it wasn't sort of engraved at the same time, if you like, you're going to get a sort of a mismatch. So as it is at the moment, we've got 3D there, um, but we've got the Nemesis logo, if you can see it, in the glare, down there. So they're kind of mismatched. But if you want to match them up, what you can do is just loosen off the button a little bit. Loosen a couple of the little parts of the tube. Let's see, just tighten that up there. Tighten the button back up again, and lo and behold, you've got 3D in line with the Nemesis logo. And on the back, you've got your serial number lined up with the and the Atmon McCanny logo lined up with your nemesis at the bottom. So, as a unit, I think it looks absolutely brilliant. So, all in all, what do I think of it? I think it's bloody marvellous. I really do. For a number of different reasons. First of all, many people who like dripping, you know, the biggest problem is that, you know, when you go out and about, you have to bring a bottle with you and, you know, you're trying to drip, you know, in situations where it just isn't the right thing to do or, or it's downright dangerous, like when you're driving or something like that. So what this means is you've got one and a half mils of liquid in there in the bottom. Plus as well, if you're using cotton, there's an awful lot of liquid, you know, sort of seeped up within the cotton already. And that's why you should actually preload the cotton um, before you fill the bottom as well. So that means that you've got the one and a half mil in reserve at the bottom, plus you've then got a fully soaked co coil, which, you know, or wick rather, which is actually going to be holding a lot of liquid in itself. So that means it'll keep you going for quite a while. So I think that's fantastic. You also get the benefit of the, the beautiful flavour that you tend to get from a dripper out of it, but in a much, much handier sort of a setup because you can carry your, uh, 
you know this extra liquid around with it and then also it just looks so damn good you know this is uh, uh, in a 18500 setup on the Nemesis and you know it's a nice little size it's just brilliant cost wise I believe it's going to be 110 euro uh, I'm not quite sure when it's coming out but uh, at 110 euro is it worthwhile it's a fair bit of money but it's a fair bit of atomizer as well um, what I didn't say in terms of one of the advantages of this is is that it is really really easy to put together if you're putting a single coil on it now I'm crap at dual coils as people will have seen on some previous builds that I did but I found it really really easy with this and with a single coil it's a doddle it, frankly it couldn't be any easier so for an atomizer that functions as well as this does and is as easy to put together as this as easy to take apart and clean as this and as well engineered as this I would have to say 110 euro is a good investment because that's the way I'd look at it. This would be an investment. This is something that you'll be using for a long time. Um, and you know, it's got the versatility to be able to set it up in a number of different ways. It's got that handiness of being able to carry extra liquid within it, uh, but giving you always the benefit of a proper dripper taste and uh, vapor. So all in all, I think it's another big th thumbs up for uh, Atma Mahani. The 3D Dimmy's Dream Dripper. Matte version in my case, also available, available in the polished version. I think it's great. I think it's, it's something which is going to be staying with me for a long, long time. And uh, yeah, in my opinion, I think it's a well worthwhile purchase if you're into rebuildables and if you're into dripping. I think it's just fantastic. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you again soon. Cheers! And finally, watch this. It's kind of cool. Every time you push it down, look what happens. Little smoke ring.